Many of today's control systems, such as field-oriented control, utilize compute-intensive algorithms and thus are more often being implemented as hardware on FPGAs rather than as software on general-purpose microcontrollers or processors. The goal is to minimize the latency between the measurement and the response from the controller. One of the challenges is that when you're designing a system like this, which here we have modeled in Simulink, is that you're designing custom hardware, so you have to be a bit more hands-on in managing things. For instance, you could generate software without even modeling the latency of the processor. You probably would want to model it for accurate simulation of the system's feedback loop, but the process of compiling code for a processor abstracts a lot of the details like that. Of course, abstraction comes with a price in terms of performance, so if you want the performance of implementing your algorithm in hardware, you'll have to be a bit more explicit. Why is that? Hardware has parallel paths of logic, and it takes time for signals to propagate through the logic, so the parallel paths have to be coordinated. A simple example to illustrate starts with a Clark transform, where we have the beta output coming from a series of complex mathematical operations, while the alpha output is just changing the precision of one of its inputs. These both go into parallel operations in the park transform where the results are added here. It might take 10 nanoseconds for the path from alpha, but 30 nanoseconds from the path from beta to arrive here. And what if alpha changes in the meantime? Its second value will arrive here before the first one does from beta. So that's a very simple example. More complex designs will have paths splitting and merging into others. So hardware designers use registers, or pipeline stages to coordinate the timing of these signals through the data path. And thankfully, HDL Coder automates a lot of this. Now, back to our Simulink system, we have a mix of sample rates, discrete, continuous transitions between the two, and constants. The FPGA uses a fixed step discrete sample rate, in this case 20 microseconds, which it just inherits from the inputs from the system. And that's fine for our simulation because the whole system is running at that sample rate. But when we use HDL Coder to map this to an actual FPGA, by default, HDL Coder maps the sample rate to the clock rate. Every one of those pipeline stages that HDL Coder adds would add 20 microseconds to the latency. Of course, FPGAs can run at megahertz speeds, which means we could set our sample rate to something like 25 nanoseconds, which is 40 megahertz. So this solves our latency problem. We could add up to 800 pipeline stages at that rate to get a 20 microsecond latency. But a sample rate this small in Simulink really slows down the simulation. Rather than having to change your sample rate for HDL code generation and back for simulation, you can just specify a global oversampling factor in HDL coder in the global settings. This will generate a global base rate clock in the HDL that is the Simulink rate times the oversampling rate. For this simple illustration here, I have it set to be 8. So the base clock will run at 8 times Simulink's data rate, and this is called the clock rate. This clock goes into a timing controller that generates an enable pulse every 8 clock cycles for the logic that runs at Simulink's data rate. Since the system in Simulink will be sampling your FPGA's output at the data rate, the logic in the generated HDL will output at the data rate as well. This means if your design is mapped to HDL as is, everything is running at that data rate because the only time we ever sample something is at the output. But remember, we're going to have to insert registers to balance timing and also for other reasons like for iterative algorithms such as Newton wraps and square root or even for area optimization such as streaming and sharing. In those cases, at what rate do the inserted registers run? So back to our global settings, and you can see this clock rate pipelining, which is selected by default to be turned on. This specifies that any inserted registers are connected to that fast clock rate. This is a very powerful capability. It lets you interface your FPGA with the system at the 20 microsecond sample rate that you simulated at, but you can run the internals of the FPGA at megahertz speeds, shrinking your latency to much less than a microsecond. In the second part of this video series, we will show how we can use this capability to explore some design trade-offs for the field-oriented control design.